Hi, I'm Darcy Scott Martin from TrueMajority.org at the Anti-War Strategy Room. We're sorry Tom Andrews isn't here with us today. He's going to be in New Hampshire at the end of the week. But instead, we have with us Eric Lever from Institute for Policy Studies to my right, and to my left, John Isaacs for Council for a Livable World. We're here to talk once again about what's going on in Iraq and in Washington, D.C. as it relates to Iraq. Uh, we will talk to John a little bit about what he thinks is happening in the Senate. The next votes on Iraq in the Senate are expected when the defense annual defense authorization bill comes up. We had expected that to come up the last week of June before the 4th of July recess, but yesterday there was a deal on the immigration, very highly controversial immigration bill. It now looks as though next week when the Senate first finishes the energy bill, it will then go back to the immigration bill. So the timing of the defense authorization bill is uncertain. <coughs> When we get to that bill, however, Senator Harry Reid, the majority leader, has talked about at least four different votes in Iraq. Uh, Senator Feingold of Wisconsin will again bring up his amendment to set a hard deadline to get out of Iraq. Senator Levin and Reid will join together an amendment to set a deadline to begin, a hard deadline to begin to troop withdrawal and a goal of getting out within six months after that. Uh, we expect to vote also Senator Jim Webb will offer an amendment on setting standards for our military, which the standards which have suffered because of the war in Iraq. And uh, lastly, there should be a vote on deauthorizing uh, the war, overturning the 2002 authorization to go to war. And I think that will be offered by Senator Hillary Clinton and Senator, Harry, uh, Senator Robert Byrd. Those are certainly far more brave moves than are happening in the House right now, where um, there's a lot less activity. Eric, do you have much knowledge about what's going to happen before September when there's been a promised vote? Well, the, essentially the deal that was struck uh, during the end of the last supplemental was to provide another vote on the McGovern language, uh, which would start to set timelines for withdrawal. But we're not expecting that to actually come through until September. So it's very you know, unclear of you know, what sort of actions mm -hmm. are going to be promised in the meanwhile. I mean, the Pentagon report that just came out earlier, uh, I guess two days ago now, which talked about what the readiness levels were, um, actually what was going on on the ground, should provide some fodder for, you know, members to have hearings and, and try to continue this discussion. But essentially, you know, the feeling that I've gotten is essentially everybody breathed a sigh of relief once the, you know, the supplemental had passed and are now not interested in, in taking the debate mm -hmm. any further. I noticed that it's now referred to as the Obi McGovern bill, which I thought was an interesting move. Dave Obi's thrown his loyalties to that wording. And I know there's talk of an attempt to find something that could be voted on that would bring those more um, disheartened Republicans who've started to talk negatively about Iraq to the floor to have some kind of vote in July, but the strategy yet seems unclear. So that may never even happen, and September might be our next bite at the apple. I know activists out around the country are doing a lot, and the Americans Against Escalation in Iraq have hired and are training now 100 paid organizers to work in 40 Republican districts that are swing districts with Republicans who might have said some things about Iraq that shows there's some leverage there, and they're going to be deploying them around the country, housing them, having them be active in those districts all summer long, hopefully to get more media attention, more conversations, and people like Tom will also be out and around and talking to activists around the country, seeing what can be leveraged during the summer while so little seems to be going on in Congress. Yesterday I did a debriefing for the Center for American Progress who brought um, roughly 50 students in for an Iraq action camp over the last week and you know they had said that the reception that they got in offices was extremely chilly, that members positions are extremely hardened at this moment and so trying to find what the leverage points are to you know pressure members I think is far more important than worrying about you know the language in any particular resolution or bill that comes mm -hmm. to the floor. Yeah, uh, Darcy, but I, I think the ultimate goal at this point is building towards the new votes in September. We should yeah. have votes in the meantime in the Senate, maybe even one or two in the House related to deauthorizing the war. But in September, after the military commander in the uh, ground, General Petraeus reports, the U.S. ambassador to Baghdad, uh, uh, Ryan Crocker reports, then we should have vote, new votes. And it's the hope at that point that these Republicans that are being pressured over the summer, who have voted for the war time and time again, been real supporters of George Bush's war, at that point in September, we hope they break from the war. Mm -hmm. that, that can be the significant uh, political turning point against the war.
Right. So I think the strategy of the summer of softening is what, what folks are going with who do the grassroots work. And certainly, hopefully, we hope there's opportunities for you where you live to be active on the war in your local area, visiting your member. They take a, a big recess at Fourth of July, and then they have most of August that they're home doing district activities. And, and it's a, a time when constituents really can have an influence on their members. So we'll see you again here next week when we still have another uh, chance to see whether there will be any activity on the Hill, but we hope that you're going to start seeing activity out where you live. Thanks so much for joining us this week.